Hey folks, Technivorous here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Kira 4.6.1. They've released a quick bug fix and I do have some nice tips and tricks for new users of Kira. So stick around and check it out. I got some things that you won't want to miss. Alright, so to begin here, let's start off with the bug fix. So the bug fix was for the uh, Ender 3. There were some nozzle options that weren't showing up. Um, so if I go and select my Ender 3 here, it will take a minute to transfer over, but now you can see that it does allow me to select the nozzle. Uh, I just noticed that it's actually doing that for the TiVo Tarantula, so I, I don't know if they know about that bug. If you take a look in the What's New section, it will say that they got a lot of reports coming in about nozzles missing for this machine definition. So this is perfect. This means that the uh, beta testing that they're doing is working pretty well, and they're getting a lot of feedback. Unfortunately, they're not getting enough people to give them that feedback before the beta uh, becomes a full release. So we're going to continue to push the betas and try to get more people in, giving them the feedback so they don't have to do hot updates like this. So this is a minor update where they are fixing some missing Ender 3 Pro nozzles. If that was your problem, definitely check this out uh, because some of the additions they made in the last version were great. And now that your problems are fixed with the Ender 3, you should definitely give them a look. They also fixed a problem with some Z-Seam placement. Changes to the Simplify algorithm in 4.6 caused Z-Seam placement issues. They have now fixed those issues. So. That is basically it for what's new. It's very simple. It is just a hotfix update for those missing nozzles. And like I said, let's see if I select uh, my other printers, what shows up for nozzles, because I was able to change to the point four there under Ender 3, uh, but a lot of my other printers aren't giving me an option to change the nozzle size. So um, I would have to go in and do that in the machine set settings. It would still work, but that's not, uh, not ideal. Let's go back to the Ender 3. Come on, touch it today, Junior. There we go. Okay, so the couple things that I wanted to show you real quick as far as tips go. One of them was suggested by one of our users here on the channel. And in that vein, I'm going to point you to the preferences panel. If you click preferences and click configure cure, you will be presented with all sorts of options. Now, uh, there are a lot of different things in here uh, as far as which settings are visible in your slicer which printers you have, your materials, and your profiles for said materials are also in here. We're going to go into general up here. And there are a couple of little things in here that you can check out. So the first one is slice automatically. Uh, if you select this, whenever you put a model in, it will automatically slice, which means it continues to slice. This can, this can eat up a lot of processing power. And it can actually bog down your computer, especially if you have more than one model on the build plate. So I leave it off. If you have a really fast machine uh, or you're not worried about that or just want to try it out, go ahead and click this. This will mean that there won't be a button that says slice down in the bottom right corner. It will automatically slice and when it is ready, it will just say save uh, or print. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also the option to change the currency up here. And I'm going to go ahead and change mine uh, because this is an updated version. It didn't pull that over from last time. And there is also these. Now this was the tip that was pointed out to me. Um, I didn't know about these. I'm not really a big fan of the dark theme myself, but it is kind of cool. If you want to check it out, we can go ahead and turn it on and pop over and take a look at that. So let's do that now. We're going to hit ultimate for dark, and it says you will need to restart the application. So let's do that now. And here it is, the Kira dark mode. So it is kind of cool. It is a different look. Uh, nothing overwhelmingly awesome about this other than just the dark background and stuff like that. So let's get to our next tip. My next recommendation is actually pretty simple. Uh, this is for new printers who are looking for their ideal print speed. What I recommend is that you go over here to the settings and find the speed and go ahead and set that to 100. Now I'll explain why. Uh, and the reason is that all of these other speeds are derivative from that main print speed. So when that changes, it will change the rest of them based on the same factor that it changes the main print speed. So why this is ideal is because I know 100 millimeters per second is a little too fast for most of these machines. What I will do to find the perfect speed for a machine is I will set it to 100 millimeters a second and then I will turn it down. Uh, I'll normally turn it down to about 50 millimeters a second 
uh, which means when I put a print on the machine using this method, uh, the G-code will say it runs at 100 millimeters per second. I will slow it on the machine to 50%. And that is the reason that I put it at 100 millimeters per second because 50% of 100 is really easy to calculate. It is 50. So uh, pretty much any percentage you turn it to is going to be that translation to the millimeters in the main print speed. So basically, um, I can dial it in using the dial on my printer and you'll be able to tell in between the different layers where you change speed at. Using this technique, it's very easy to find the optimal speed for a printer without sacrificing quality and still get as much speed as possible. And once you have that number, that's the number you're gonna to wanna to put in here for your print speed. Now, uh, like I said, the rest of these values are gonna be calculated through the software based on that speed, uh, but those calculations also happen on the fly when you adjust the speed through the printer itself. So when I turn it down to 75%, it will adjust the rest of these accordingly. So it's not really an issue. I don't recommend leaving it at 100. Uh, I say print something kind of wide and tall and square, uh, and you'll be able to see those, those lines, the differences in the different speeds, and find your optimal speed and make note of it. And like I said, that's the value you're gonna wanna use here. And another quick tip for new Kira users. If you got a new printer and you ran the test prints and you're not having any issues at all, uh, and then you go to slice your own model because you set up your own printer and you're getting problems, uh, one of the biggest things that people do, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is under uh, printer, manage printers inside my print settings, in the machine settings. Uh, if you look here, it says origin at center. Notice how I don't have that clicked. Leaving it unchecked will print your model in the, in the center of the build plate. Checking this box will print your model at the front left corner of the build plate, uh, meaning that three quarters of it will be hanging off of the build plate. Now, I don't know why that they have this Boolean arranged the way that it is. Uh, from the way that they word it, it sounds like it should be checked to print in the middle of your build plate, but that is not in fact correct. You want this unchecked or you're gonna be printing off to the side. And the final tip for this video, guys, are extensions. Extensions, extensions, extensions. Now these are amazing tools that are basically add-ons or extensions to the existing software of Kira. And one of the reasons these are so awesome is because they're so easily adaptable and there are so many things you can do with them. So if I click on the marketplace here, it will fetch everything that's in there. And not only are there plugins, there are materials as well and you can see what's installed. But I always like to pop into the material mar or into the plugin marketplace and check out what they have featured and see if there's anything new because there are some really cool things. Some of the extensions I use quite often are the SolidWorks extension and the Thingy Browser extension. Thingy Browser is awesome. It'll let you import models directly from my mini factory or Thingiverse without opening your browser. It does it all internally. Here are the feature tools. There are some mesh tools. There is a settings guide here's that SolidWorks plugin I was talking about and there are a couple of other integration tools but there are a lot of plugins and a lot of these are community made plugins for example this barbarian units is one of the oldest and well established um, it's an extension that enables users to convert models from basically millimeters to inches is what this does which is pretty cool uh, it just kind of brute forces its way in there there is an octoprint connection which is handy as well and a bunch of other things. So definitely check these out, see if there's anything in there you think you can use. Once you download and install them, you will have to uh, reopen Kira to get them to work. Once, once you've done that, they will show up in here. And just as a quick example, real quick, I'll show you the Thingy browser. Uh, right now it's at the Thingiverse. Let's search my mini factory. And there's the two models I have on my mini factory so far. is an end cap for a 2020 extrusion and my TiVo Tarantula Pro extruder on. So um, let's see. I think I have a few more on Thingiverse. Let's check that out. Uh, yes, you see some temperature towers, some sculpted models, uh, my coins, uh, the noisy cricket model, and some calibration cubes, a bunch of other stuff. So. Basically, that's just the gist of it. If I wanted to grab one of these, I would just say details here. Um, and then I can just add to build plate and it'll immediately put it in there, which is pretty cool. I'm not gonna do that because I don't need to print this. So uh, that is basically it for our tips and tricks with Kira, guys.
And there you have it, just a couple of quick tips and a pointer to that update that they made. So if you're an Ender 3 user, it is now safe to say that you are back in command with 4.6.1. Uh, as always, expect to see more from Kira. They develop quite rapidly, and I'm actually expecting the 4.7 beta to be out within the next three weeks. So hopefully, uh, according to the timeline that they put out, uh, generally they will stick to that. And if not, who knows, it could be a little bit longer. I don't like seeing hot fixes like this, like I said, uh, but I do appreciate the fact that when they have a problem that's addressed to them by the community, they jump right in and take care of it and get a hot fix out there. Uh, it's just kind of sad because if they had had a, a few more Ender 3 users in on the beta to give them that feedback, and I'm curious to see if they ever get around to Akira 5.0, but so far, so good. Um, very pleased with the last couple versions of Akira. I'm um, curious to see, as I said, if they know about those missing nozzles for some of the other printers. It's strange that they would fix it specifically for the Ender 3 and not any of the other add-your-own printer printers. So uh, We'll see you in the next one, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Smash that like button and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more tips and tricks. If you're a new Kira user, let me know if that origin at center was helpful to you. I've had a lot of questions about that, and I think uh, probably going to end up pointing a lot of people to this video to solve their, their problems. So uh, that's going to be it for this, guys. Technivorous out. And that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for stopping by. If you'd like to become a Technivore, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And YouTube's suggesting a video for you right here. And there's a playlist right here that's just 3D printing stuff. Also, if you'd like to see your name up top with the rest of my Patreon supporters, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. There, you too can contribute to the channel and make the Technivorous channel even better.